everyone and welcome to another episode of Wisdom Chat and today I have my wonderful guest Rachel Surtees with me. Good morning Rachel. Good morning Phil. <laughs> we're going to be um, talking about a change that we're going to do next year with regards to the Wisdom Chat podcast and um, invited Rachel to come and join me today just to um, partly to introduce herself, but also for us to share together what we're proposing. So, um, Rachel, before we go any further, just just introduce yourself. And uh, you, you were my first guest on Wisdom Chat, weren't you? Oh, right well, back indeed. in, it was the end of December, wasn't it? So it's literally virtually a year ago. Yeah, it is indeed a year ago. Um, we talked about preparing yourself for Christmas and how to look after yourself financially and well-being wise over Christmas. Um, yeah. Being excited about the podcast then, actually. So to be invited to collaborate a bit more is fantastic. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure, Rachel. And uh, I know we've sort of maintained our sort of contact with each other. And, um, and one of the things that really struck me was it would be really good um, to collaborate with somebody and do something slightly different. So before we go any further though, Rachel, just, just tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Um, so I am Rachel Surtees and my business name is The Rambling Psychotherapist. So I am a relational integrative psychotherapist and I do the majority of my work in the outdoors. So I work one-to-one -one with people in therapy in the outdoors, but I also offer online therapy as well as an alternative for people. Um, I've got a particular interest in leadership development uh, and relational leadership development at that, um, because I believe that um, if people can be supported to have really healthy relationships and to understand the dynamics of relationships, they can be absolutely fantastic leaders. Um, but that the current provision tends to fall down a little bit as far as support is concerned um, of leaders at the moment. So, yeah, that's what I do for a business. Um, and I remember first meeting you networking, Phil, uh, and recognising that our paths crossed over a little bit, actually, um, from because I remember you saying, oh, I do financial well-being. And I thought, oh, I wonder what that is. And we met for a one to one and we talked for hours about the kind of the psychology behind um, money, about stories, about um, how people um, work emotionally rather than um, fr from a cognitive analytical perspective, et cetera, et cetera. So um, like I say, it's just exciting to be um, invited to collaborate a little more. Well, it's my pleasure. I, I actually wonder what you were going to say just then when you said <laughs> <laughs> when we first met. I do remember that as well. And mm. um, and I must admit, I too felt quite excited because um, it's not, it's in some circles, it's not an easy subject. Um, yeah. When you talk A, psychology, and, and B, when you're linking that to things like finances, one mm. of the least talked about subjects that... Um, um, for, for whatever reason, in our culture, we find it very hard to talk about money, um, like mental health, certainly on a personal level anyway. But um, when and we... Yet, and yet, what I've found as I've gone along is, is that if you can find comfortable ways of introducing the subjects, mm. people are absolutely fascinated by this stuff as well, and they really want yeah. to engage with it. Um, I, I find that with many of the today subjects in life, actually, um, yeah. that you can find a way that's comfortable for people to be introduced to it, um, that actually people are hungry for this stuff. Yeah, it's interesting. You, you are right, because um, even in the latter few months, there's been a growing interest in the whole sort of money psychology side. Mm -hmm. And where you, you alluded to stories a moment ago. And the thing that I found that's worked with regards to engaging somebody in a conversation is telling stories. And mm -hmm. very often people, when they listen to the stories, they can, they can identify with certain aspects um, of you know, whoever was involved in that particular story. And so okay. it does make it a little bit easier for them to open up somewhat. Um, well, so, yeah. hu humans are sense-making beings. Um, yeah. So actually, the thing that fuels us is stories. We, we, we have experiences and then we create stories to explain what happened. 
yeah. them. So, it, you know, if you can come at things from a like a narrative perspective, a story perspective, it makes it much more accessible for people rather than facts and figures. People tend to turn off around facts and figures, like in, in my experience. Um, I think you're very right on that. And um, and I'm just thinking, um, rather than keeping our listeners sort of on tenterhooks in terms of what is this <laughs> news that we're going to announce, yes. um, I think we ought to just go ahead and, and announce it because um, I think this is the exciting part. And, mm. um, uh, and even when we're talking about sort of um, stories, it's interesting when you've got a number of people involved in a story, how it sort of makes it come alive. And, Absolutely, and makes so, it richer, doesn't it? Yeah. So, um, so shall I go ahead and uh, announce it? Please right. do. So, to all our listeners, um, you know, wherever you may be and in whatever circumstance you may find yourselves in, um, Rachel and I have agreed that we're going to collaborate together on um, what we're going to call Wisdom Chat Plus podcasts. Um, and the difference here is not just that, just that we're collaborating, which will be excellent, but also at the same time, we're going to be inviting a number of guests to join us for different topics. So, um, Rachel, do you want to say anything about some of the topics we've talked about? Yeah, so some of the things that in certainly in the coming months that I'd like to cover, um, I'd like to look at digital well-being. Um, partly from a perspective of we are becoming an increasingly digital um, race, I guess. You know, everything that we do seems to be digitally based these days. So I want to look at the pros and cons of that a little bit and how you look after yourself in an increasingly digital environment. But also looking a little bit at the digital offerings as far as well-being concerned as well um, and look, looking at how they can support you um, from a health and well-being perspective. Um, I'd also like to look a little bit about how um, organisations, large and small, um, can support their employees from a well-being perspective and how to do that well. Um, because yeah. Some organisations do it really well. Uh, and others don't. And there are some challenges to, uh, that organisations face um, to putting an adequate provision out there for their employees rather than just engaging in tick box exercises. So I'd yeah. like to look at all the kind of facets um, that surround that a little as well. I think that one will be particularly good. Um, I mean, all of them will be good, but uh, that one in particular, because what I've come across is um, those companies who yet are not fully engaging with the employee well-being arena, um, often it, it's either because they don't really know where to start or um, they've been told, oh, you only need X, Y, Z. So, for example, in the world of finances, it might be um, you just need uh, to be able to provide certain employee benefits so mm. it might be um, a salary-linked um, savings scheme or a salary-linked loan. Um, and obviously, in, in time, we'll say more about those. But um, so, so it's, that, it's this misconception of, um, you know, we can have um, cycle to work or car share or, you know, gym memberships and um, uh, or, you know, certain other employee benefits that... Right. Uh, or provide somebody at the end of a phone to talk to and yet wonder why people are not using the service. Absolutely. Um, and I think one of the other things that certainly like SMEs often face is they've become a little bit outfaced about how to do it well. Um, yeah. they, they, they struggle from a cost perspective. Well, actually, I think large organisations struggle from a cost perspective as well. So the more employees you have, the more cost is involved in, in putting together a really good employee wellbeing program. And therefore they struggle because yeah. of the large scale of employees, but also the smaller end of the spectrum, um, they struggle from a cost perspective as well about how to put together a really adequate provision. Um, and they can often do with a little bit of support about what actually constitutes adequate provision and what would be adequately supportive of employees, like I say, rather than um, something that looks good on the surface, something yeah. that 
actually be supportive with their employees. Um, and there are plenty of organisations out there that can support with that. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I think um, to be able to give reassurance to organisations and companies, large, medium and small, mm. um, that uh, there are good um, organisations out there that can actually help and guide them through the process, um, make it as painless as possible, mm -hmm. but also at the same time help those organisations um, recover any costs. Because one of the one of the things I've noticed, having been involved in training and development for many many years, is the first areas that tend to get hit when there's a squeeze on costs tends to be training and marketing. That those mm. two areas tend to get hit first. So it's people being able to see that this is an investment, not a cost. Yes, it costs, but you're investing. And the, and the part about it is the return is far greater often than the cost itself. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, uh, basically, basically well employees means a well organisation, yeah. isn't it? Like, yeah. like organisations run on people. Um, so if your people are happy and well and invested in your organisation, you're going to see the returns financially. Yeah, definitely. Um, but uh, again, I think organisations get a little or can get a little scared about the costs involved. Um, so these organisations out there that support people to um, provide employee wellbeing and do it well are often looking at it from the most cost effective way of doing it as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and uh, just thinking again as well about the subject matters, because mm. um, there was a couple that um, I thought of in our sort of conversations. Mm -hmm. um, one of those is, uh, and it's linked to the digital well-being that you talked about earlier, mm -hmm. and, and it's to do with financial technology and how that is uh, rapidly developing in lots of different fields. Mm -hmm. So from, from a consumer point of view, um, what are the uh, resources available to us out there that enable us to manage our money well and, um, and make life a lot easier in managing money? You know, the finance industry are very good at making things complex. They're yes. not the only industry, but we t we, for some reason, we like to make things quite sort of technically and, uh, and, and complex, where in, as uh, in actual fact, aspects of our finance should, should be simplified, not made more complex. And how some of these apps actually do that for us. I was going to say, actually, if you think about the barriers that people face to an ever increasing digital world, the more complex something is, the more likely somebody is to avoid using it. Yeah. So I think simplifying things can be really beneficial. And I understand that there need to be certain complications in place to, in order to make it safe. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, th there is that. Um, and, there's, and to be honest, many of the, the good apps out there actually comply with the same level of security that the banking industry employs mm -hmm. um, and it comes under what's called open banking we'll say more about this later on but mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, it's regulation set up by government um, and so there's been a lot of work uh, to protect people's identities and protect people's money and so on. Mm -hmm. um, there, there was one other thing I was thinking and that was to do with um oh dear me it just slipped it's my mind financial abuse wasn't it yeah you the, there's that subject yeah in terms I'm of sorry. financial abuse that's a slightly different um field um to what we're referring to in terms of the technology but the financial abuse side um it's it's more common i was shocked to be honest and mm. how common it is um and uh, harrowing to hear some of the stories um and you know, so when I've listened to some of the stories of people's experiences, even just recently I was talking to somebody and they shared a story, um, you know, in, in a relationship. So, you know, husband and wife and mm. um, and how that um, transpired the, the financial abuse that caused, um, in this case, um, the wife to uh, feel completely and utterly... Um, violated in many respects to the point where uh, her ability to trust others 
um, is severely affected. And uh, and it's, she's, it's, she's been traumatized, hasn't she? And she has. She has very much. So. It's compromised her ability to relate to people. Yeah, and uh, and just and be able to trust them. So now she's in a, a new relationship, um, married, and the husband completely understands where she's at. However, he wants to be able to help and support. He wants to contribute, and uh, at the moment there are barriers there. And so it's really looking at how can we help her reduce those barriers, but still feel safe mm. and um, and things are dealt with appropriately. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, so that's an area I'd really like to to cover. And I, as I was saying to you earlier, touched on this with the illegal money lending team, um, had a couple of people from there that, um, you know, uh, were, were involved with Wisdom Chat. And, uh, and when you listen to their stories, um, the stories of people who have succumbed to a money lender, and uh, and I think there was a story on the uh, the news recently as well about um, uh, one where this lady had en- ended up paying something like twenty six thousand pounds for about two and a half thousand pound loan. Crikey. Wow. Not all in one one go, but yeah. um, and how that was extracted from her, the fear, the threats, and, yeah. and so on. So um, so I think that's that that's quite a sort of key area. But I remember what, what I was thinking about earlier was um it was a, a story to do with um the it well it's to do with the well-being side. I I, mm-hmm. I think the story eludes me now, but it was to do with um, the importance of helping individuals feel that what's talked about is confidential, it's mm. safe and it's secure. Mm. Sometimes when we don't communicate that message to people, um, there is assumption, like, for example, we've provided uh, an employee assistance program. And in that, there is a telephone number you can phone somebody to talk with and receive help and support from. Yes. And yet people have not used it. And it's about how we communicate things and uh, communicate the message and recognise the importance of keeping people safe. So, so for it's, example... It's, really, it's actually really important. It's something I come across in my work. So as a psychotherapist, I assume that everybody knows that our work will be confidential, that obviously anything that's said to me will not be um, spoken about outside of the room other than in clinical supervision, which is with another person who has to hold the confidentiality boundaries. Um, And yet the amount of people that will get to a point where they're about to say something sensitive and say to me, you won't speak to anybody else about this, will you? So it's something that I've learned over time that I have to make really clear with people in advance of starting yeah. to work with them that our sessions are confidential so that yeah. they feel comfortable enough. And like I say, I, I sort of assumed people would know that, people would understand that. Yeah. But to make it clear, I think, is really important. V- vitally. And I've learned, mm. uh, if there's one thing, never assume anything. Um, uh, what's that saying? It makes an ass out of you and me. It does. Uh, <laughs> it does. <laughs> but but it, but it's true. Um, you know, the fact that we've assumed that people think it's um, it's it's confidential and they're okay, um, yeah. and yet people are not responding. Actually, the perhaps feeling it's not confidential or they don't understand the situation. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. There was um, a survey done, quite an extensive one. And one of the questions in the survey was uh, asking the employer, would your employees, if they needed to talk to somebody, talk to their line manager? And 13% of the employers said, yes, they would. Okay. The same question was asked of the employees, mm-hmm. and only 5% of the employees said, yes, they would. Wow. And, okay. and so that, even though there's still quite relatively small numbers, mm-hmm. we, we are actually identifying there um, uh, a miscommunication or a misalignment mm-hmm. of understandings of how people might respond or not yes. respond. And I think things like, um, will this affect my career? Will it affect my you know, job prospects? Will it, um, will it affect the way that people treat me? And 
you know. Yeah. Uh, so all these fears come to the surface. So and there's, uh, a, a, there's a, a level of emotional security, emotional safety needed, and yeah. that's become yeah. integrated, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I think that's a, a key area um, to, to address. And that's one of the, the, the things I think, you know, in all of this, getting across to people is um, in this world of mm -hmm. well-being, um, confidentiality is vital mm -hmm. and that it's clearly communicated to people. Um, yes. So. So I'm excited just, to be digging into some of these subjects. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, so I, this is what I would say to our listeners, and that is um, uh, clearly we've got some subjects already that we'd like to, to cover based on what we've, we've come across, what we've seen, what we've experienced. Um, but also at the same time, uh, we'd like to hear from you. Any subject areas that you think, actually, I'd really like to know more about this, please get in touch with us. Um, you can get in touch um, through uh, my website, um, that's uh, www.orumgoldltd.co.uk, or through Rachel's website. Rachel, your website Which address is www.ramblingpsychotherapist.co.uk. Brilliant. And so, um, and many of these podcasts, well, they are, they go out on social media. So um, if there are any subject areas that you think would be really useful to be covered, then please do get in touch with either Rachel or myself, Phil Holdsworth. Um, and we would, uh, we would look at these um, and we would be very happy to uh, to cover other subject areas. Uh, what's More important than happy. To us? I love investigating new areas. Yeah, and I think what's important to us is the fact that we're covering things that mean something to other people. Mm -hmm. You know, there are there are important subjects that um, people feel this is something that's pressing us at the moment. So mm -hmm. there might be even things that, as the year goes on next year, that we feel um, actually I think this is a subject area we need to cover. But there may be um, areas that we've not considered, and our listeners uh, may well um help us out on this so that'd be really good but i'm I'm, I'm, so. I'm really excited to work with you rachel and yeah, um, nice, and i think um i think we'll end up with some very good wisdom chat plus um podcasts um we've got some guests already lined up for uh january so our first podcast will go out on the 9th of january um and we'll put that across social media but um yeah in the meantime we'll be looking for some very interesting people to um chat with around these subject areas definitely so if anybody's interested in speaking as well please do get in touch with us too yeah 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 that's wonderful well yeah. rachel thank you so much um and uh, lovely to invite you on board and uh, i'm looking forward to us collaborating together next year Thank you, Phil. Thanks so much. Likewise, I'm looking forward to it too. Okay, you take care. Take care.